Hello, thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Sun Wipirama from Universitas Gajah Mada. In this uh, introductory uh, video, I would like to deliver the concept, the basic concept of data science and several applications of data science. So, I come from Universitas Gajah Mada, Indonesia, and if you want to know more about uh, what I've been done uh, related with the data science methodologies or some machine learning algorithms, you can go to my personal page, suno.staff.ugm.ac.id. Okay, for this course, uh, actually we uh, divided the course into three sessions. The first session is about the basic concept of data science. In this session, I will try to uh, explain why data science is very important in this recent age. And then in the uh, second sessions, I will try to uh, explain about data-driven decision making uh, and why uh, this uh, type of decision making is important for your organizations as well as for your startups or uh, for uh, any kind of decision that you want to make. And then in the third sessions, I will try to uh, deliver some case study of data science life cycle. Okay, so we enter the first sessions, uh, the concept of data science. Uh, in this uh, first sessions, uh, before we explain about data science, uh, I have a very good video about the fourth industrial revolution. And uh, later on, I will try to explain uh, what is the relationship between the fourth industrial revolution and the data science. Just check it out. Okay, so that's all about the fourth industrial revolution. <clears throat> okay, so if we, uh, uh, yeah, if we call the content of the video, we see that in the first and in the second industrial revolutions, actually the uh, human physical system was extended by, uh, for example, in the first industrial revolution, we know uh, steam engine, and in the second industrial revolutions, we know about uh, electric machines. So in this case, in the first and in the second industrial revolutions, uh, the human physical system is, was extended by uh, the machines. So human can uh, do more jobs, yeah, not limited with the human physical system. And in, in the third industrial revolutions, we enter the uh, era of the internet where uh, all, almost all people in this planet uh, are connected by the internet. And this uh, brings to a new reality that when a lot of people uh, are connected to the internet, then uh, there will be very easy way to generate a lot of data from all of those people connected through the internet. So that in the fourth industrial revolution, as we uh, saw in this video, the cognitive uh, uh, ability of the human is extended through what we call uh, artificial intelligence or uh, later on we will uh, use this term in in the data science um, course so 
now a lot of people talking about AI, artificial intelligence, and uh, this is also useful in, in terms of uh, how we can use AI to reveal hidden patterns or to generalize a, a pattern inside the uh, very big data. And what is the biggest impact from the four industrial revolutions from the technological point of view? As I mentioned before, that uh, this is a very rough uh, picture about what uh, happens in an internet uh, minute. In 60 seconds, uh, for example, uh, 1 million uh, Facebook users are logging in. And then uh, for the YouTube, we uh, have data like 4.5 million videos viewed. And then for Twitter, for example, uh, uh, 87, uh, 500 people tweeting, etc., etc. So, in this era, we are, you know, like uh, we have very uh, easy way to generate a lot of, a lot of data from uh, almost uh, every applications that we use in the uh, internet or in our mobile devices. So, human produces. A, a lot of data so we call uh, in this era we, we, we can call it big data uh, I will uh, try to explain it later on but uh, the data is so complex because it, it consists of uh, several types of data not only text not only images but also videos and uh, signals etc so it's very difficult to be organized with the ordinary uh, database management software and some experts say that uh, the data will grow and in reality yes of course the data grow by 20 times between uh, 2012 uh, until 2020 right and then okay so we, we, we can see that this data is uh, are used in uh, so many fields for example in the business and finance and then in the medical data, we can see that a lot of people are now using the computer-aided diagnosis system to help them uh, generating the uh, analysis of, uh, for example, some diseases. And then in the sports, you know that some uh, football teams can uh, won, uh, can win the, the, the game by, you know, analyzing uh, the, the, the pattern of the prior uh, matches between uh, different uh, uh, football teams. In the weather, of course, we use data to generate the uh, weather predictions. Agriculture, using data for smart agricultures to help a farmer uh, do their best uh, growing their crops. And in the entertainment, we see a lot of uh, data used in the entertainment starting from uh, animations, for example, uh, generating uh, new animated scenes by the prior uh, uh, data. And yeah, some people say that uh, the term big data uh, is used because we have a very big uh, data in terms of a volume. And then for the speed of change, we have a very fast uh, uh, changing data, so we call it velocity. And then uh, for the types, you know, like a of variety we have so many types not only images not only text but also videos signals um, and so many data uh, even uh, in the types that we never think it before and in the uncertainty of the data so sometimes we can get the, the data very easy but uh, on the other case uh, the data is quite uh, are quite difficult to be obtained and you know, like, um, yeah, uh, the size itself will be a challenge, you know, like uh, when you have like a very limited uh, hard drive, but now the data is always changing. If you generate data from social network, you will have new data every single uh, minutes or every single second. So it's uh, practically, we have no limit for the data. It's uh, consequently can't be fit in one machine and then well, yeah, the data is part of our cultural and daily activities. So, uh, in this case, we uh, tend to, you know, like uh, collecting and using a lot of data rather than small samples. And we have to, you know, like um, accept, uh, we have to be ready to accept messiness in our data. That's the consequence of big data. And uh, nowadays, by 
analyzing those uh, big data, we can uh, uh, refill. Uh, we can have uh, several advantages. For example, in uh, some uh, you know like uh, companies, they use uh, uh, data analytics to, for example, to try to understand what is the the preference of uh, of customer or even they use the data to you know like uh, uh, trying to optimize the the operation of the company or trying to reduce the risk or financial management it's, so it's um well it's a purpose if you you, you can find it uh, almost everywhere so uh even uh uh you know like uh by analyzing the consumer data uh, you will be like uh, leading the the business in your 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 in your field if if you can understand uh you what what type of uh customer that you have right now and uh, what is their preference and how can you offer them with the you know um a suitable uh, products or suitable advertisement a targeted marketing then of course you will be you know leading in your field so uh in most case uh this you know knowledge uh this technology of analyzing the data is called data science so data science what is data science data science is a field of a study and practice that's that's focused on obtaining insights from data and in this case uh, data science will be useful if uh, the data is uh, complex you know, cannot be overcome by a human yeah so if uh, the data is small enough and then the human can find pattern in the data perhaps uh well you can do it manually but in this case uh we will call it data science if the data is uh, big enough so that human can can overcome the data by themselves and then the code itself normally the data science is used to make predictions or to you know to support the decision making and it, well, yeah, uh, people that are uh, uh, that concerns in data science, normally we call them uh, data scientists. And normally they have uh, several basic skills that they have to acquire. For example, the programming skills. This is, I think, uh, it's obvious, you know, you, 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 you have to at least understand uh, one uh, programming language, you know, like uh, Python or R. Now Python is the the most popular programming language uh, in the world, I guess, uh, and it's uh, surprisingly it's more popular than C or C plus plus, and also statistics. You have to you know understand some statist statistical concepts, a very basic one perhaps, and some probability probabilistic uh, concepts, and then also machine learning. You have to you know. Uh, be able to 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 choose which uh, machine learning techniques that you uh, want to use to solve uh, typical problems or to solve uh, particular problems. So you have to learn at least uh, three uh, skills yeah, to be a, uh, a practitioner in a data science. And some people say that uh, data science is merely a, a, a new term of you know like a business intelligence. Mm, I don't think I I don't think so. Uh, why? Okay, f the first uh, reason why we uh, so differentiate data science with a PI or business intelligence is because uh, data science deal with both structured and unstructured data. You know, like for example, uh, no S SQL is uh, very popular uh, f for the data scientists. Uh, you don't have to fill in all instance or all rows. But in the business intelligence, you have to uh, deal with the structured data. So you, you use a SQL. And for the BI, you will normally uh, use statistics or visualizations. But in the data science, uh, we use a broader approaches like uh, machine learnings, or per perhaps you will use a graph analysis, etc. And uh, data science will uh, you know, like giving you more information about present uh, and future, but in the uh, PI, you will get uh, information for uh, past uh, and the present. And, you know, the, the tools itself is, you know, like quite different uh, compared with uh, 
for example, business uh, intelligence and data science. Of course, you can use R for both uh, tasks, but uh, nowadays, uh, a lot of people use uh, several softwares in data science, and surprisingly, some softwares are uh, free of charge, so you don't have to pay to use this software. Okay, so um, everyone's talking, everyone is uh, concerning about this, and not everyone is really able to do the data science or data analytics. So there is a shortage, you know, like um, if the demand is, uh, you know, like quite bigger than compared with the supply, then of course uh, data scientists will be paid with a crazy amount of money. So uh, even Harvard uh, Business Review say that data scientist is the sexiest job of the 21st century. I don't know, but um, well, I guess so. Okay, so uh, see you in the uh, second session. Uh, I will uh, uh, try to explain you about what is the data-driven decision making. Uh, thank you very much for uh, watching this video. We will uh, meet you again in the second session.